So I think I'm going to take one of these apart as soon as I've got them open and have a look and see if I can remove those fingers so it doesn't destroy the tapes. Good morning, it's morning here before work. I thought I'd do a quick unboxing video. Not of this, but I really like the look of vintage cassettes, especially something like this. I've been thinking of doing a playlist on this. And what this one, this is quite heavy tape actually. This sort of reminds me of um, The Graduate. So I'm gonna do uh, Mrs. Robinson and a playlist based around that kind of era. And I saw these on my usual late night eBay surfing. And I really like the look of these. And I thought, I think I've had these before and they're really nice looking cassettes. So I put a bid in and um, I can't remember how much I won them for. Yeah, I paid a lot for these, £12.74 in total. Uh, that is uh, £9.68 for the item, including 60 pence um, eBay buy protection fee and the rest was posted. So that's quite a lot of money for two new Type 1 cassettes. And it wasn't until after that, it wasn't until the following day that I'm thinking, oh, I've seen, I've got some of these cassettes somewhere. What, what, don't I, what do I remember about this? That is making me a bit nervous and what it is is this this sm cassette it's i think it's called the secure mechanism or the security mechanism so that's a bit of a plain hanging card that isn't it what i think these are i don't know whether i'll be able to open them up i think if i think i've had one of these before and there was a youtube video which i will look up and uh, put in a um put in the description box where what it is let me get another set I think the security mechanism or secure mechanism is a couple of little feelers like an extra bit here which is plastic and it sort of suppose the tape runs around the outside of this little finger and the finger rests up against the spool and as the spool fills up the finger moves that way and it was some sort of fancy idea that it would help the tape spool properly you know the, onto the um, onto the spools but what had happened was uh, as these got older that finger was sh um, splitting the tape it was shredding the um, magnetic layer off of the uh, original PVC layer so I think I'm going to uh, take one of these apart as soon as I've got them open and have a look and see if I can remove those fingers so it doesn't destroy the tapes. So let's get to open them up. It is a shame to take them out of the packaging, but I bought them for the cassettes, not for the packaging. So let's, uh, let's go for it now. The packaging's a bit boring, really. So we've got two of them. I'm gonna open one to use that. I'm quite into orange. I've been into orange for many years, maybe five years, uh, way before Apple decided it was a really good colour. Uh, yeah, so let's have a look at the box. I really ought to have a look up and find out. I meant to look and find out whether these were, what year these were, but I forgot. So I might put that on the screen if I remember to do it during the editing. Okay, both the same, I guess. 88 metres. So my guess is, where are these from? Germany, made in Germany. So let's open this one up. So do you do the same thing? Do you, if you're a cassette enthusiast, do you find a playlist which matches the look of the cassette? I don't very often do it, but because for me, part of the enjoyment of it is the actual look and feel of the cassette, I feel I should have some I would like to have music. I quite often do it age appropriate. So if I've got um, a cassette, which I know is sort of mid eighties, I'll put mid eighties or earlier music on, music that would have been available for that cassette when it was bought new, when it first came out. Look at that, beautiful. So look at that tape, it's not really packed on there. It looks, as if it's been badly packed, which I think is what the security mechanism is for. It is a screwed shell, so we're going to get that open in a minute. So let's have a look at the actual tape stock. Nice orange leader. Look at that. Perfect. 
don't know whether you saw the uh, TDK FE um, video I did a while back. I'll link to that up there and in the description box. The tapes, um, I think it was the FE, the tapes came out and they were already, already had sort of like a line at the edge of the tape, a line of damage. This is very cardboardy. It uh, probably doesn't come across very well on the camera because I've got daylight and natural uh, and uh, overhead lighting on. But this is quite a, um, it looks a bit like recycled card. It's a little bit darker, it's not as bleached. Nice, okay, so let me find a screwdriver now. I, have, I think the only screwdrivers I've got are magnetic ones, which you shouldn't use on tape, I guess, but there's nothing on it, so. Right, let me get a screwdriver. This is where it all goes horribly wrong, I think, because I don't really have very much time before I'm supposed to start work. And my wife has just got out of the shower and she's probably going to be using a hairdryer in a minute, so if you hear some music over the top of what I'm doing here, it's because there's too much noise while I'm talking. So let's have a look. Flathead screws. Oh, screwdriver's bent. I need to get another bit. God, they're tight. Also, there's a very large possibility of the tape unspooling and it being, uh, I think as V Westlife called it, the cassette spaghetti. I'm getting over a cough. Okay, a bit nervous now. Oh, it doesn't want to come off. Could be very careful here. Kind of stuck down the bottom. Look if it's a tight fit on these bits here. Zoom in a bit. Did I miss a screw? No. Let's have a little bit of a pry tool. It's definitely stuck on this bit here. I think I might actually open it up that way because looking at these, it'll hold the tape in position a bit better. Oh, well, more brute force. Definitely stuck on this part. Oh, there's a slip sheet. Okay, well, past the point of no return now, aren't I? Yeah, so what I think it is, something's holding it in here, and I wonder whether this metal plate has been um, glued in somehow. There we go. And there we have it. Let's have a quick look at that. Just a glued plastic window. Ah, there's a little post there and a little post there. That's what's holding it up. Now I might have to look back at the uh, video to see which way up this slip sheet was. So this one is can't really see it. I'm sure it'll have to go one way in or the other. All right, so that bit is the raised ridge. So I'm going to put that in. The raised ridge goes to the outside of the cassette. So let's take these fingers out to start. So these are the things. What happens is. They are supposed to guide the cassette, guide the tape when it's being spooled on. Let's take off a bit of slack. So 
how it goes in around here. They sprung loaded. They're not even sprung loaded, so it goes around there. Oh, I'm in a right gonna be a right mess here, aren't I? And that's exactly what I didn't want to do. Yeah, so the tape goes through there and it goes around these fingers and those fingers are supposed to help the tape um, spool nicely on uh, onto the spools. But I think they all they do, I think, is ended up putting a lot of extra friction on one side or the other side of the tape and then just delaminating it. So I did have some tweezers here somewhere which I can't find, so it's a finger job to get these out. So I think that's all we need to do. Apart from the fact I've got to get it all back together now and all spooled in, which is not going to be so easy. Just going for a bit more light for my old eyes. So that's going to be fine. That's the one that came out of there. So... If I put that back on, I've got to get the other slip sheet on. Don't recall ever doing this before, I think I probably have. There we go. Oh, it's stuck on again now. Oh, God. Right. Got to make sure that's on straight. So the other slip sheet's got to go with the curved bit out. Got my fingerprints all over it now. It's got to go on like that. So I suppose let's do this first. So, oh, that's fallen back in place now. So I think what I'll do, can I put the slip sheet in on that? Because it's got to locate in those two pins. And then hopefully turn this upside down it doesn't fall off. Nope, that's fallen off. So, oh, what a disaster. So that's got to go back in there. I'm going to have to put this on up the other way again. going to have to do is put this bit on that bit and then put that bit on that bit. Oh my god, what a nightmare. So it's got to go over that side. That's got to go over that side. I'm probably twisting it as well. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing this. It's a lot more hassle than it's worth. Talk about yourselves. I just say that as if more than one person is going to be watching this video at a time. Okay, so that's got to go around now, so that's okay, right. So now when I put that bit on, this bit won't fall off. A bit of dust on the tape, oh, I made a right mess of this. Okay, so. Okay, 
I'll show you that. So this has got more mass on it, so it's harder to turn. So if you want to tighten the tape, rather than tighten it on this bit, and this bit spin, swivels round, tighten this bit, because this has more mass, you can get the tape a bit tighter. And then this one will probably unravel in a minute. There we go, so let's see if we can turn it over without the slip sheet falling off. Am I still in shot? I think I am. And I've got a capture. Oh, you can't really see it. So let's rearrange the camera a bit. It's impossible to do, but I've got to make sure that this piece of tape goes the other side of that. And we've unspooled again. It's a very delicate job, this. So these little pins, these little pins, they've got to locate in the recess on the other side. And I'm not going to get the tape uh, pinched. Okay, I would have thought it would be a nice easy feeling to get that in there now. But it's stuck here. So I wonder if that uh, slip sheet has moved. No, the slip sheet is in exactly the right place. It's just quite firm. So let's tighten that up again. All right, so that's the way to do it. So tighten it up on this side so that one can't unspool and it keeps the tape sort of taut. Make sure the tape path is correct. And then put it on at that sort of angle to keep the tape inside the cassette. And then when it's square, clip it down. There we go. Right, let's have a very quick bit of me putting the screws back in. And I am now late for work, so I'm going to have to make up some time later on. I've lost my screwdriver. I suppose before I put the screws in, I want to see whether the tape moves nicely when I spin the spools. Yep, it does. Right, you don't need to see me putting screws back in. You've seen that before. So one final check. Seems lovely. I did pinch the leader a little bit there, but that's no big deal. So I'm going to wind this all the way along and then all the way back in my little winder, which is this, and then uh, make a recording of that after work today, I think. So that's it. That's all for this video. Julie Wilder Work PC is uh, booting up. Let's have a closer look at this. Um, let's have a look. So that's the finger, or the arms, or whatever they're called. So it's going to be difficult to show. There we go. Oh, it's got some writing on it. Yeah, so the tape would go into this groove. See that groove there? The tape would travel along that groove and then get packed in there. And is it sharp? It's yeah, it's sharp enough. Yeah, it's sharp enough to put a little scratch in my skin. So I'm glad I took those out. So that's it. Definitely the end of this video. Bye. Hello. This is the part where you click like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I don't have sponsorships on my videos, so if you want to help me directly, you can sign up on Patreon for a small amount of money, or you can click Super Thanks to send me some money via YouTube, and that would be super. Thanks.